Good evening. Uh, coming to you from Ottawa, Canada. Uh, this is the Britannia Baptist Church. Uh, Sunday, August 8th message coming to you early because of a picnic tomorrow uh, that will not uh, allow us to have the presentation tomorrow. So this special message, keep your eyes on the finish, is coming to you tonight. So greetings to those of you who are able to watch live uh, tonight and those who will be watching at some later point uh, from wherever you are located, um, both in Ottawa, other parts of Canada, the U.S., the U.K., Venezuela, Malawi, the Philippines, wherever you are. I pray that you will be challenged and encouraged by this message uh, tonight. Keep your eyes on the finish. I hope you have uh, your Bibles and, or a notebook and pen to write down. We have quite a number of relevant scripture verses tonight that will encourage you, strengthen you, and help you in your walk with God, which is like a race. And we are in the time of the Olympics, so I will have some specific examples from the Olympics uh, for this message tonight. So before the, the message itself, I will have a brief uh, prayer. Dear Lord, I pray for each one who is watching this by your Holy Spirit, give attentiveness and openness through their hearts and through their minds as your word comes forth this evening and anoint your messenger with power that you will be magnified and glorified through this message, Lord Jesus, I ask in your precious name. Amen. So keep your eyes on the finish. This message is being presented during the closing days of the Tokyo Olympics. The Summer and Winter Olympics are held alternatively every four years. The athletes who train for these Olympic Games go through very much in order to engage in the final competitions that may only last minutes. They may face discouraging remarks, such as you can never succeed at an Olympic level. They may face, and they often do face, the pain or tiredness of daily preparation in training. They may face lack of financial support because they put their full energies into training for the Olympics. So many will quit their jobs or cut back on their work. They may face also um, illness or accident in preparing uh, for the Olympics. They may face disqualification, disqualification through faulty drug testing or not qualifying in their field, not being chosen for the Olympic Games themselves. They may have put a lot of effort into it and then not make the final cut. They have a goal and they persist and they persevere in achieving that goal. And their goal is gold at the Olympics. They have a focus. They keep their eyes on having that golden finish. As a story told in Today in the World from Moody Bible Institute, Wilma didn't get much of a head start in life. A boat with polio left her left leg crooked and her foot twisted inward, so she had to wear leg braces. After seven years of painful therapy, she could walk without her braces. At age 12, Wilma tried out for a girls basketball team, but didn't make it. Determined, she practiced with a girlfriend and two boys every day. The next year, she made the team. When a college track coach saw her during a game, he talked her into letting him train her as a runner. By age 14, she had outrun the fastest sprinters in the United States. In 1956, Wilma made the U.S. Olympic team, but showed poorly. That bitter disappointment motivated her to work harder for the 1960 Olympics in Rome. And there, Wilma Rudolph won three gold medals. 
the most a woman had ever won at that time. She had persistence and perseverance. She didn't let her disability and her limitations keep her back. She let nothing stop her in that Olympic goal. She had a desire to finish, and she did. Sifan Hassan was running in a qualifying race recently for the 1500 meter race at the Tokyo Olympics and was in the last lap of this qualifying race. A runner fell directly in front of her and she also fell over that runner. She picked herself up and she found that she was now in last place. She did not stay there. She ran again and she passed 11 runners to win that race. She did not give up. Later that same day, she won gold in the final 5,000 meter race. What an example. Not giving up despite this unexpected handicap coming within this race, she kept going. She did not give up. The four years before in the Olympics, Greg Lohannes probably practiced each of his dives 3,000 times. Kim Zamaski has probably done every flip in her gymnastics routine at least 20,000 times. And Janet Eppens has completed more than 240,000 laps. Training works, but it isn't easy or simple. Swimmers train an average of 10 miles a day at speeds of 5 miles per hour in the pool. That might not sound fast, but their heart rates average 160 the entire time. Try running up a flight of stairs, then check your heart rate. Then imagine have, having to do that for four hours. Marathon runners average 160 miles a week at 10 miles per hour. Two important principles are followed. Increase progressively the amount and intensity of the work and train specifically. Weightlifters don't run sprints and basketball players don't swim. Here we see in these athletes a specific commitment, ongoing persistence and perseverance. Now what about the followers of Jesus? What can we learn in these examples? Paul said that the Christian life is like a specific race. We prepare, we run, and we do not give up. We discipline ourselves, our bodies, our minds, and our emotions. We become focused, not distracted, and we look ahead to where we are going, heaven, not what we have left behind, slavery to sin. In 1 Corinthians 9 and verses 24 to 29, we read, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. In other words, in the Christian life, be committed. Be serious. Verse 25, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Are you taking the time to read the Word of God? Are you taking the time to develop your relationship with God in prayer? Just like athletes being prepared for their race in the spiritual race that God has set you on, are you in training? Are you taking that time to be prepared? Paul continues, they do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Here we see the importance of self-discipline, of self-mastery, of a single-minded focus. Do you have 
that life of self-discipline. Do you have that life of self-control? Do you have that single-minded focus to run for Jesus day by day? In Philippians 3, verses 13 to 14, Paul says, Brothers and sisters, remember, he's writing to Christians, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining, that takes effort, straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus, in the Christian walk. We do not look at where we came from. We look at where we are going to heaven to be with Jesus. We press on. It is an effort to keep going, just like an athlete in training. It takes an effort to keep going through the training. It takes an effort when they run their race, when they fought, fight their fight in the Olympics and just in the spiritual walk of faith. It takes effort. We strain. We press on. We do not give up. We keep going. The Canadian women's soccer team on August the 7th at the Tokyo Olympics showed what it means to run to get the prize, Olympic gold. By not giving up through regular time, through two periods of overtime, a penalty shootout, and then a final sudden death attempt to get a goal where the first team getting the goal would win it all. So they forgot what was behind. They forgot their previous two Olympic bronze medals. They strove toward their goal, which was Olympic gold, which they achieved. Now, what about the Christian race? Do we do it focused on the finish line or winning the fight, knowing the prizes or crowns that will be rewarded, forgetting our past failures and continuing on without giving up? Does that describe you? Are you continuing on without giving up? Like the Olympic gold medal winners, the Canadian soccer team, they did not w give up. Even though it was challenging, even though it was a struggle, they kept going. In your Christian walk, do you keep going? The Greeks, Jay Stowell and his book Fan the Flame said the Greeks had a race in their Olympic Games that was unique. The winner was not the runner who finished first. It was the runner who finished with his torch still lit. I want to run all the way with the flame of my torch still lit for Jesus. So we need to keep running, but we're not to allow our spiritual fire to go out. Are you still running? Are you making sure your spiritual fire doesn't get put out by discouragement or tiredness? Are you still running for Jesus? Now, athletes at the Olympic Games are judged on their performance and given rewards based on what they have done. Sometimes the judgment, however, can be unfair and biased. One day, Christians will be judged fairly by Jesus based on their performance. One day you will be judged on your performance, on your service to Jesus Christ. And there will be rewards or crowns given out. The crowns given out in athletic games in the time of Paul were perishable. They were made of of flowers or they were vines, but our spiritual crowns will be permanent. Amen. They'll be permanent. They won't perish away. They will be for all time. We will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ or the Bema seat judgment, as mentioned in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 9 to 10. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 9 to 10, it says, So we make it our goal to please Him. Is your goal to please Jesus as His follower? 
So our, we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all, that includes you, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. One day, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This is guaranteed. You will be there. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each, that's you, each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. We will all give account for what we have done or not done as followers of Jesus. Pay attention. This is going to happen. It will involve you. It will not just involve others who are followers of Jesus Christ. It will involve you. You will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You will be judged as to how effective and how faithful you have been in serving Jesus in this life. And there will be different crowns given out. The f there are five specific crowns or prizes that we as followers of Jesus Christ will receive in serving him, in keeping our eyes on the finish line and going across that finish line. Now, these five crowns are not in any particular order. And a person can be given more than one crown for faithfully following Jesus and meeting these qualifications. Now, what are these crowns that will be given out? Now, these are the spiritual equivalent of an Olympic gold medal. But they're far more important because a gold medal can one day be destroyed and no longer here. And a person who receives a gold medal will one day die and can't take that gold medal with them. But these crowns that will be given out to followers of Jesus are forever. They will not be taken away. First crown is the crown of rejoicing. It's also called the soul winner's crown. Are you someone who is able to rejoice when you see someone who is enslaved by sin brought into freedom in Christ? Does this bring you rejoicing? 1 Thessalonians 2.19 says, For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? So Paul is saying he's rejoicing in the fact that people have come to a knowledge of Christ through his ministry. In Luke 15 and verse 10, it says, In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. As people come to a knowledge of Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, the angels in heaven rejoice. Do you rejoice when you hear of someone who has come into that faith relationship with Jesus? Philippians 4 and verse 1 says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. So again, Paul is saying he's rejoicing in those who have come to a knowledge of Jesus through his ministry. So there is a crown of rejoicing for those who are active in introducing people to a faith relationship with Jesus Christ. A crown of rejoicing. The soul winner's crown. Are you winning people for Jesus? Are you sharing your faith so that others may come to know Jesus? We have been called to share our testimony, to share our faith with those who are separated from God by their sin. Are you sharing your faith. If you are being faithful in sharing your faith, then one day this crown, this soul winner's crown, will be a crown that will be available to you. Second crown is the crown of righteousness. We are made righteous through Christ, but also we are to live a life that is righteous or holy as we wait 
and we, as we look forward to the return of Jesus. How is your life? Are you living a life that is right before God? Are you living a life where you are eagerly looking forward to the return of Jesus? 2 Timothy 4 and verse 8 says, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will re reward to me, a word to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So here it is saying those who live a righteous life and who are eagerly looking for the return of Jesus will receive this crown of righteousness. Philippians 3 and verse 9. And be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. We are made righteous through our faith in Jesus Christ. And here, this crown of righteousness will be available to those who are living a life of righteousness, who are living a life in right standing with God and who are eagerly awaiting the return of Jesus. How is your life? Are you living a life that is right before God? Are you eagerly awaiting the return of Jesus? Jesus was here the first time and he said for his followers to be prepared that he would come back at any time and we are to be expecting and to be ready for his return. Amen? So there is a specific crown available to those who are living a life right before God and who are eagerly expecting the return of Jesus. A third crown is called the incorruptible or imperishable crown. And th this in 1 Corinthians 9.25, which we read before, and also Galatians 5.22.23, where, where one of the parts of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. And this is speaking to those who live a life of purity, of self-discipline over sin, of sacrifice, of endurance, of those who do not give up. Are you living a life where you are disciplined, where you, you are not giving in to temptation, you are not giving in to the flesh, but you are persevering, you are continuing to be self-disciplined in your life. Oh, there is this incorruptible, imperishable crown for those who do not give up who keep going, who don't get distracted, just like a runner who doesn't look behind, who doesn't look to the side, but looks ahead, who has disciplined themselves to training to run the race. Have you disciplined yourself to run the race that God has set you to run and to keep running until the finish line? The fourth crown that we will look at is called the crown of glory. Now, this crown is for faithful Christian leaders and teachers, those who help others to grow in their faith. It may be a pastor, it may be a missionary, it may be a Sunday school teacher, it may be a Bible school leader. It's those who are faithful in teaching the Word of God to others so that they might grow in their faith. 1 Peter 5, verses 2 to 6. 1 Peter 5 verses 2 to 6. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain. I have seen too many leaders fall into greed and corruption, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you. I have also seen too many leaders who are encapsulated and who are captured by pride, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to your elders. All of you clothe yourself with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but those but shows favor to the humble. 
Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. So here is a crown of glory to humble servants who are faithfully teaching and training others in the Christian walk. Philippians 2, verses 3 to 4. Philippians 2, verses 3 to 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Again, it is speaking and warning those who are involved in leadership not to become sold out to money, not to give in to greed, not to give in to pride. So here is another warning. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. Are you involved in teaching others in the Christian mock? What is your attitude? Do you have a, an attitude, I'm better than them because I'm a teacher, because I'm a leader? That is wrong. Do you do it only to get attention or to get money? That is wrong. You do it because this is what God has called you to do. And those who are faithful in doing that will receive the crown of glory. The fifth crown is called the crown of life. And this is for those who are persecuted for their faith. Those who suffer for Jesus. James 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. This crown of life is also called the martyr's crown. Many today are suffering in the name of Jesus. Many are dying for Jesus, their faithful walk. For Jesus, their faithful testimony. Others are suffering in prison. Loss of job for Jesus. 2 Timothy 3.12 says that all who live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. It's going to happen. Be prepared. As we live in a culture and a society that's turning its back on God, that's turning away from accountability to God, even here in Canada and other countries where there has not been persecution, you can be assured that as this culture turns away from God, you will face persecution as you take a stand for Jesus Christ. Revelation 2 and verse 10 says, Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Here are words that we can take to heart. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. As we live in a culture and a society that's turning its back on God, you will come under persecution. You will face opposition. And this is saying, don't be afraid. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. So the crown of life is also called the victor's crown. So here we have five specific crowns that will be given out to those who have been faithful in serving Jesus. Are you going to receive a crown? And these crowns are like Olympic gold. Available to followers of Jesus who have faithfully served him in this life. And when we all appear, those of us who have entered into that faith relationship with Jesus, when we all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, we will find out how faithful we really have been and whether we will receive a crown or not. Will you receive a crown, or maybe more than one crown, for faithfully serving Jesus? Are we focused, like the Olympic athletes, on pursuing these crowns in our lives? There was an elderly lady who was once asked by a young man who had grown weary in the fight whether he ought to give up the struggle. I am beaten every time, he said dolefully. I feel I must give up. 
Do you, can you relate to that? Are there times you're discouraged and you're just ready to give up? Did you ever notice, she replied, smiling into the troubled face before her, that when the Lord told the discouraged fishermen to cast their nets again, it was right in the same old spot where they had been fishing all night and had caught nothing. Adoniah Judson, who was a Baptist preacher and missionary in Burma, spent 12 years in ministry, spent time in prison. 12 years, he saw no results of his labors until the first Burmese person came to faith in Jesus Christ. Keep going. Paul says we go by faith and not by sight. We are to be faithful in serving God. The results are in his hands. Athletes do not let failure stop them. They keep focused on their goal to finish well. If they are not successful in one Olympics, those who are able train to try to qualify for another Olympics. As we looked at the example previously about the woman who did not do well in one Olympics and kept training, and in the next Olympics she won three gold medals. Do not give up in running for Jesus in fighting the good faith, in finishing the course. Do not give up. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7. Paul said, I have fought the good fight, past tense. I have finished the race, past tense. I have kept the faith, past tense. How are we doing? Are we finishing our race? Are we fighting the good fight? Are we keeping the faith? Will we be able to say this like Paul at the end of life, however long our life may be? Are we keeping our eyes on the finish? Are we keeping our eyes toward Jesus? the author and finisher of our faith. Are we keeping on? Are we pressing on and not giving up? Charles Spurgeon said, This is the badge of a true child of God, that a man endures to the end. And he could could be saying the same thing, that a woman endures to the end, that a child endures to the end. He's saying this is the badge of a true child of God. They do not give up. Is this an and a description of you. In the Tokyo Olympics of 2021, there was a 21-year-old named Sydney McLaughlin, and she won gold in the 400-meter hurdles and set an Olympic record just recently in that event, being the first woman to finish that event in under 50 Two seconds. Now, in an Instagram posting by her that was shared in Sports Spectrum by John Ackerman on August the 3rd, she is quoted as saying the, the following, and Sydney McLaughlin is a strong, committed believer in Jesus Christ. Now, listen closely to what she is saying. Here she is a gold medal winner, set an Olympic record, first woman to ever finish under 52 seconds. Hear what she says, and I quote, I no longer run for self-recognition, but to reflect his perfect will that is already set in stone. I don't deserve anything, but by grace, Through faith, Jesus has given me everything. Records come and records go. The glory of God is eternal. Thank you, Father. What a testimony. Could that be your testimony? She did not let her accomplishments turn her in to someone who was proud to someone that focused on their achievements to the exclusion of her faith in Jesus Christ. But she continued to testify 
and to witness to the glory of God and to her faith in Jesus Christ, despite her accomplishments in winning Olympic gold. What a testimony. What an example to us. She had finished her goal, but that she knew was temporary. At the records that she had broken, others would possibly break in future. But what was important to her was to glorify God in her life. Can we say something similar in our life? Are we keeping our eyes on the finish line, on the finish of our life? Because our life will one day finish. How will we do in following Jesus? What will be revealed during the judgment seat of Christ in regards to our service. Will we receive a crown in having been faithful in following Jesus? We're not to look back at where we came from. We're not to be distracted by what's going on around us. Our fight, which we are involved in, will one day be over. Our race, which we are involved in will one day be completed. And the question we need to ask, will we have kept the faith? As Paul said, he fought the good fight, he finished the course, and he kept the faith. What will you say? How well will you finish? Following Jesus is not easy. He never said it would be easy. He said we are to look to him, and he is the author and finisher of our faith. He has given us the resources to be victorious. Ephesians 6, we're called to put on the full armor of God. As we spend time in training, this life is training time. We're being prepared for eternity. Are you spending that time training for service? Developing your relationship with God through prayer. Learning His will for your life in reading the Word of God. Fellowshipping and being supported by other believers sharing your faith so that others may come to know Jesus. Keep your eyes on the finish. We are only here for a short period of time. One day our life will be over. Our race will be finished. Our fight will be over. How well will you have done? One day this will all be re revealed before the whole host of heaven, as we go before Jesus. May he say to each one of you, well done, my good and faithful servant. How well are you running? How well are you fighting? Keep going. Keep pressing on. Don't give up. You're in training. You're running the greatest race of all. You're fighting the greatest fight of all for Jesus in this world. He has given you the resources to be victorious. Keep running. Keep fighting. Keep going. Keep pressing on so that one day before the hosts of heaven, we will be commended by Jesus. And our time will be finished. The race will be over. And we will have a crown or crowns that we can then give back in appreciation to Jesus. Amen? How well are you doing? How well are you running? Are you on the point of discouragement? Are you on the point of giving up? Then I pray that even tonight you will resolve to keep going, to keep 
being prepared. Athletes keep going no matter how hard it gets, no matter how painful, they keep going because they focus on their goal. Our goal is pressing on toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Focus on what God has called you to be and to do in and through Him. Amen? Keep going. So I'm going to pray for you tonight that you will be encouraged in your faith. Or whenever you watch this, I pray you will be encouraged not to give up, but to keep going, to keep being faithful in the name of Jesus to what he has called you to be his witnesses here, that people may see what you do and what you say, that it may bring glory to God, that they may see Jesus in you. John 3.30, he must increase, but I must decrease. Is Jesus increasing in your life? Be encouraged. Let me pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray for each one who is watching this, who is a follower of yours. I pray that you will encourage them, that by your Spirit you may empower them with boldness, Lord, that they may be strengthened through your word. David said, that he hid the word of God in his heart, that he might not sin against you, Lord. And I pray that your followers would practice memorizing the word of God, that they would better prepare them in training for the race they are now running. Lord, encourage them to keep going, for one day this race will be over. Lord, may each one not give up. Like the woman who got tripped up in the race, she got up and ran again and passed 11 runners and won the race. She did not give up. Lord, I pray you will encourage each one listening to this message not to give up, but to keep going, to keep focusing their eyes on Jesus, to keep focusing their eyes on the finish line that they will one day reach. I pray and ask that you may give each one who is hearing my words victory in the name of Jesus. For you have called us that we are more than conquerors, not in ourselves, but in Christ Jesus. And in Philippians 4.13, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So encourage each one, strengthen them, guide them, direct them, that they may run for you and rejoice in you. And one day, Receive one of these eternal rewards, these crowns for service at the judgment seat of Christ. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We praise God for the opportunity we have to serve Him. If you've been encouraged by this message tonight, let us know. So I pray this message has been of encouragement to you tonight. So may God bless you. Uh, tomorrow and beyond tomorrow into this coming week until we meet again at the Britannia Baptist Church Facebook site or my own Facebook site or other face Facebook sites, um, Wednesday nights especially, Britannia Baptist Church Facebook site for the ongoing study on discipleship at 7 Eastern Standard Time. So by the grace of God, we will be back with you then. Uh, for another study through the Word of God to encourage you and strengthen you and to guide you. So may God bless you in this coming time of serving Him. May you be encouraged. May you have been blessed. May you have been built up in your faith through this message tonight. Day by day, step by step, prayer by prayer. Keep going in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. May God bless you until we meet again. Goodbye for now.